Hello everybody, this is Hammer Strecker here. Today we've got a really interesting old gun on the table. It's a Browning Challenger. It They don't actually call this one a Challenger 1, but I'm going to call it that to, to differentiate it from the 2 and the 3. So this is the earliest evolution of the Challenger series. These are no longer manufactured. The Buckmark series, which followed this, is still manufactured. They were made by FN and you know, along with a lot of Browning guns at the time. And this one is in really, really good shape. You can see some brush marks and stuff on it. Man, this camera picks up everything, even a little speck of dust. They have wraparound grips, which you can see. And these grips are very expensive to replace. So if you happen to have one of these or you get one of these, be real careful taking the grips off. You crack these grips and it'll probably cost you more than the whole gun to get a replacement set. This particular one happens to have no chips or cracks or any damage to the grips. This one's in really good shape. Comes with 10 round magazines, and you'll see this one is loaded with snap caps. They're inert dummy rounds that I'm going to use a little bit later to demonstrate the trigger. Uh, this gun is, like most 22s, is not dry fire safe. So I'm going to set this 10 round magazine aside. By the way, it's a real heavy duty steel magazine with a nice follower to catch your thumb on. So it's a well designed magazine. These are kind of hard to come by. But if you manage to find one, it will it'll work quite well for you. They do seem to be reliable magazines. And you'll see this says 22 LR Browning on the bottom of it. They're blued magazines. So let's pick the gun up. Okay, I've got the safety on. It is unloaded, and at the same time you can see that the feed ramp is kind of semi-polished. There are some machining marks on it, and probably some wear marks from time, but it's a somewhat polished. During the time we had this, at the range, it didn't prove to be ammo sensitive at all. The only issue we had with it is a couple failed to fires. We we're using Winchester Super X, and of course, 22, sometimes you'll get that. It may have been the ammo, or it may be that the firing channel, firing pin channel, you see when I get this apart, it may need to be cleaned. Uh, unfortunately, that's easier said than done. There's pins that have to be driven out. It's not like, you know, Glocks and some of them where you just thumb the piece off the back and you're right at it. That may have to be done on this, and that's not uncommon when you get an old gun. This one was made in 73, that you have to do springs. I mean, the thing's you know, 40 years old, 40 plus years old. It's probably older than half the people that are watching the video. It's a really nice looking gun, which is very common back in that time. There was a lot of stylizing done on them, and they were less of a you know, functioning as a tool. You get a lot of guns today, they, they look nice, but you can tell they're designed to be a tool. This was designed to be pretty and functional, and there's a lot of details that go into it, a lot of curves and, you know, other little minor details, even on the grip, the flare at the bottom, and the polish on it. Of course, this grip's got a little wear from just being used, but you could tell that when this was first made, this, this would have had a very high sheen on it. There's serrations all along both sides of the slide, and the way this works is this little piece slides, and this little arm has the sight on it, is actually attached to the barrel, and is there's a groove in the slide it rides on so that if pressure gets placed on it, it doesn't crack, but it's really kind of independent of the slide. The sight is adjustable windage and height, so there's the screw right there, and then there's a the screw on the side, and the sights are blackout. So you've got a black serrated ramp and a black rear sight. They do have a tendency to kind of disappear at the range. That was kind of the thing at the time, you know, they what they called target sights. And that was kind of a the way they did things back then. You'll see that the front blade is pinned. So this arm is part of the barrel assembly. It's all one piece. But you could drive this pin out and replace the blade. But again, this is an old gun, so you'd be looking at aftermarket type things. There's, you know, this is not a current production gun. And the rear side, of course, you could replace. During their heyday, there were different rail assemblies and other types of sight assemblies that you could get to replace this. I'm sure they still exist. There's definitely a following for these. These can be very expensive to buy. These can be, you know, inexpensive if they're in rougher condition. This one, I got a pretty good deal on this. I happened to be visiting our friends over at Guns Galore and he had it in the case. And he had a reasonable price on it, especially for the condition it's in. The Challengers did come with the gold trigger, and there was a couple of variations of them. There's now with the Buckmark series, which followed it, there's a lot of variations, and they've kind of come and gone over time. But back when these were made, there were fewer variations. And then this evolved into the Challenger 2, the Challenger 3, before the Challenger series was discontinued and replaced by the Buckmark series. 
as I had mentioned, they are 22 LR, and that was the only caliber that, that I'm aware that they were offered in. And it's easy to pull tight groups with this once you figure out how to see the sights, which you know, you figure out how to line them up and actually see them against a target background. It's actually really easy to pull tight groups with it, especially with this trigger. It's about a two and a half pound trigger, and the travel on it is ridiculously short. Once I load some some snap caps up in it, I will be able to demonstrate the trigger to you. The way this one in particular is set up at the moment, the way the height is set up, it's kind of a six o'clock hold, which is actually good for sites that are difficult to see. When you try to you know get it where it's a right on hold, sometimes it's hard to see if your sights are on the target. With a six o'clock hold, you can often go below the target just a hair and actually see the sights and hit what you're going after. It's very comfortable in the hand. It's a full three finger grip and it's flared at the bottom so that it's going to kind of stay in your hand right where you want it. There is no replaceable back strap and there's just a minimal hump. It's almost perfectly straight. So it fits actually quite well and you'll see this thing sticking out here. It's got a heel release for the magazine. So I'll put the magazine in. You kind of tilt it forward to get it past the release. It goes up and clicks and then you pull this back and it pops down a bit and then you catch it with your finger to extract it. This is not a tactical fast mag change gun, you know, like you would if you were doing a competition with it. The competitions that this would have been popular in were bullseye, and speed wasn't really as much of the factor as getting dead accurate, perfect bullseye shots. That's what these were. That was the competition of the day when these things were out, and it was also useful for varmint hunting and just plain old plinking out in the backyard with cans. They were expensive in the day comparatively. So, and most guns were. Not the general rank and file didn't own guns generally. They were a little more expensive, and it was some, in some cases legislation made it a little harder to get at times, which kind of went in a cycle. At one point, they were really easy to get, anybody could get them, and then it got difficult, and now it's kind of getting easier again. From a dimension standpoint, it's neither short or small nor light. It weighs 37.4 ounces with the mag with an empty magazine in it, so it's kind of heavy as guns go. It's all metal. There's no polymer on it except the grip, which is actually, you know, kind of a nylonish material. The barrel is about six and a half inches long. Overall length is 11.25 front to back, and it's 4.75 inches tall. So from a height perspective, it's kind of similar to like a Glock 17. The width of it varies from one inch at the smallest along the slide to about an inch and a half when you get down to the flare at the bottom, so it just kind of gets progressively larger. But then again, concealed carry isn't the target for this. The, this is really target, competition, pretty, plinking. It's not something that you would was intended to ever be carried like an inside the waistband. As I mentioned earlier, the, the grip is a wraparound grip. There's one screw that holds it in place. I'm not going to remove this grip. It's one of those things you do as infrequently as possible. But basically, you unscrew this screw so far, and then it'll stop. And then you put a pin through this hole and push on the screw while you continue to unscrew it. Eventually, you, you get to drive the screw out. And then you kind of wiggle the grip off kind of this way. But I'll show you the other side of the gun while I've got it turned over. And of course, it's similar on both sides. It's a very, very nice looking gun. All sorts of curves and, and very you know, detailing. And there's no sharp edges. Like even this edge here is some kind of somewhat rounded. And this square edge is not an area where you would touch it. And then it's very, very rounded back here. So where your hand goes, not only is it a nice deep beaver tail, but everything's rounded back there. And there's no way you're going to get slide bed. I mean, the slide is a mile away from your hand. So it's a very comfortable and fun gun to shoot. I'm going to show you the trigger before I take it apart. In order to do that, I'm going to load these snap caps because it is not drop, uh, dry fire safe. I'm going to make sure it picks one up, and it did. So I've got my finger on the trigger. The take up is almost imperceptible. You can see the trigger move just a hair. That's the take up, and that's the break. A little bit of over travel after the break, but it's super, super short, super, super crisp. Another snap cap behind it. There's the reset. You're talking about short resets. That is an amazingly short reset and then the break again. It is truly a target trigger in every respect. And being a gold trigger, it's also just kind of nice to look at. So I'm going to pop the magazine out. I'm going to eject that one snap cap. Back to an empty chamber. 
and I'm going to show you the disassembly procedure on this. Now one of the things that when we do gunsmithing videos, we tend not to want to call out various fancy tools that you need. Most people that are going to do home gunsmithing are going to do it with the mechanics tool set they've got. This is an exception to that. If you buy one of these things, you do need to buy hollow ground screwdriver bits. And the concept behind it, you see it's kind of concave as opposed to kind of squarish and flat. The screws on these have very, very odd shaped slots. This is a wheeler set. And it would be very easy to either strip the head, flare the head, or scratch up the finish. So this is one of those rare exceptions where I'm going to say if you're going to own one of these and you're going to maintain it, you're going to have to spend a little money to buy the tools. If you remove this screw, this whole arm will come off but it is not necessary to remove that to disassemble the gun for cleaning uh, even though you'll see when I do get it apart it might be convenient to not hit your hand on this when you're cleaning the barrel and chamber but you start out by locking it back and then there's a screw at the front that you remove right there so I'm going to back that screw out and then I don't have to take it all the way out just a good distance and then the barrel will just kind of slide right out and because I really don't want to scratch this trying to do it turn to face the camera, I'm going to back this screw out. So I'm just going to stop. I'm going to back this screw out. I know you guys know how to operate a screwdriver. And I'm going to resume when I've got it to the position it's ready because I want to have it facing me and I want to be paying close attention to it. So I'll be picking up in a second. So I backed it out just about there. And the way you can tell is that the barrel kind of moves. It kind of moves back and up. If you pull it all the way out, you may have to be very, very careful putting it back in that you don't cross thread it, and there's no reason to take it out any further than that. In fact, you may even be able to go a hair less, but I just back it out to about that section. And then you just kind of tilt the barrel back and up, and the barrel assembly comes off. And you can see these two lugs. We'll turn it this way, it's easier to see them. Those two lugs right here, this little piece sticking out here, and they're matching one on the other side. They, they fit into a notch in the frame and the barrel slides in. So it's a fixed barrel. And now you can see the breech face and there's, of course, this one's got some wear from just, you know, time. And there's the feed ramp. Now you can see why you might want to take this off because as you're cleaning this, you know, you may knock your hand into this and, you know, that'd be unpleasant. But overall, it's fairly easy to clean once you've got it apart. Now the next step is you would take the slide off and the way you do that is hold on to it, release it, it comes off the front and the recoil spring and guide rod fits into a hole right there, that hole. And here's the firing pin. So the hammer hits the firing pin and then it will protrude out that side and you can see it's kind of a squared off firing pin and then here's the extractor very robust. Everything in this is kind of robust and well constructed and put together. Now one thing I will tell you about this is I generally put the safety on as soon as I've got it apart. You can't take it apart with the safety on but I put the safety on as soon as I got it apart. This trigger so light it would be easy while you're cleaning it to brush against the trigger and fire it. And also just to let you know this thing has a built-in DNA collector. This thing right here is the ejector and if you're not careful you will get one of these by accidentally jamming your hand up against it while you're doing something. So I would say the only really dangerous part of this gun is that this wants to bite your finger if you give it the chance. Beyond that you just got the fire control group, here's the hammer, the hammer spring and this also spring probably is a little bit worn and is probably due for replacement on this gun. To do that you take the grips off and there's some pins you replace. So we'll probably put a spring kit in it, just gotta find one, find some springs for it. But you clean all through here, you clean whatever you're going to clean, which is you know relatively easy to do. There's no reason to take the grips off unless you need to do a deep cleaning. This was a used gun. The guy before had, uh, basically you could tell he spray cleaned it. So he'd, he'd open it up and spray it off because everything inside that you could see was clean. Everything inside the gun was all full of you know, caked up, gunked up, old powder residue. So if you clean it properly and not just hose off the, the open slide and chamber, you shouldn't have to take it apart regularly. They're actually pretty easy to maintain, pretty durable, and pretty robust. Reassembly is fairly easy. You take the spring and guide rod assembly and slide it into that hole. That hole right there. 
And this is kind of like a kind of a three-handed job. Easiest way to do it is to do it this way. Now you're going to turn the safety off. And then when you get close, there's a hole, which I could have showed you earlier, right there, that the tip of the guide rod goes in. Like that. And make sure that you get that in that hole, because you know, otherwise you'll kink or damage the guide rod. Bring the slide all the way back and lock it. So now the slide is locked back. To put the barrel back on, you simply line up the, I want to show you those, those guides. See right here that channel? Right, there's a notch cut out on both sides. And there's a channel, you can see it. That's where those lugs ride, if I can get it to focus. Camera doesn't like to sometimes focus on things like that when there's something up front. But you can see the guides right there. And all you do is line those lugs up and it just drops in place. And then you tighten the screw back down, which again, I'm kind of loath to scratch this thing up. I'm going to drive this screw in and then I'll pick up where I left off. So I've reassembled it and at the end, by the way, as you tighten the screw down, it kind of feels uh, like detenty at the end. You'll feel like a click, click, click and it'll kind of feel, you know, you can feel when it's tight. And I'm only just, you know, kind of finger tighten it. I've got basically I two fingers on the screwdriver and I'm driving it with two fingers. I'm not grabbing it with my hand. You don't want to over tighten it and you're not tightening it down for all eternity. Now I'd mentioned there was a groove in the slide and unfortunately it's covered up but it's right in here. It goes all like along here. There's a little groove that it rides in and so it also kind of acts as a bit of a stabilizer to keep the slide stable but it really doesn't add significant to the function. I did put a drop of oil on there because it does slide and moves back and forth. So you've got this sight arm riding in that groove, kind of guiding the slide. Put it back in the battery, put the safety on. I keep the safety on in this thing anytime. You know, even though I know it's unloaded, it's, I'm not so worried about it you know, magically loading itself and firing. It's more to keep from dry firing it because that trigger is just so soft. Now, you may, you know, earlier I'd mentioned a lot of guns today is their tools. These were back in the early 60s, they were designed and kind of came through the late 70s, 80s of manufacture. Most guns today are still kind of, you know, kind of squarish and kind of toolish. There are a few that are still manufactured to look cool, and, and they tend to have their roots all the way back. So this is a Ruger Mark series. This happens to be a Mark IV with the push button release. But the overall aesthetics and look of the Mark series hasn't changed much. But just to kind of give you a perspective, this particular Mark series has the shorter barrel. They do make them in longer barrel variations. But, you know, kind of the consistent pattern of the day when these were made and when the Challengers were in, in vogue is, you know, long grips kind of on the thinner side with some sort of grip panel or wraparound. The Buckmarks went to a grip panel style setup and, you know, rounded trigger guards. They weren't made for gloves in tactical situations. And then either kind of a straight barrel, a bull barrel, or a taper barrel. So th that was kind of the style of the day. And it does persist forward into the manufacture of several different guns of, of those designs. And when you look at a gun like this, whether it's a 22 or not, they just look cool. They're, they're pretty to, to look at. They're comfortable to hold. They usually have nice triggers and easy to fire. So they're all over really just kind of pleasant to live with. And by the way, this is fairly new acquisition, so look forward for a review on this. And one of the things they've designed with this is these are designed to be dry fire safe, the Rugers. And unlike the Buck Browning series and many other 22s. If you like our videos, please give us a thumbs up, share, subscribe, click that bell up there if you do. Check us out on Facebook, Patreon, and GunStreamer. And also let us know in the comment if you enjoy these, this old guns. We enjoy doing them. They're a lot of fun. The guns are cool. We'll keep doing them if you guys enjoy them. And beyond that, have a great day. Thank you.